Hey, welcome back to my channel. So jazzers, sax players, wind players, uh, free spirits, no, <laughs> whatever. Uh, today, uh, today's installment is going to be uh, a couple exercises on the iwi. And I've been spending uh, uh, quite a bit of time with this instrument uh, for, 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 for several months. And um, also, um, yeah, not just to um, have a shameless plug of my book, The Book of Iwi, but first, you know, um, I just want to talk about some of the things I have in the book, and I want to present some of those uh, exercises yeah, uh, in this video and in some coming videos, I want to um, actually go through a series. Maybe I'm just going to, I'm calling this uh, Iwi Tuesday, where uh, every week I'm going to present some exercises to help you uh, get along toward, like I say, toward mastering this instrument. And, um, you know, if you're a, a well-seasoned wind player where you play several wind instruments, you know, maybe you don't even, you don't, maybe you don't even need this book, but um, at least maybe just checking out some of the things in these videos I'm going to present maybe be will be enough information for you uh, to, to take away with in order to make your own journey in order to, uh, to, um, to advance on playing the instrument yourself. Now, uh, one of the things I suggest, well, first of all, I want to say the disclaimer about my book is that it's uh, what the book, who the book is for is actually for those who wanted to start playing Iwi but haven't found any real material about how to really start, you know? And um, like for, for, for instance, my journey with the instrument when I first started playing with, playing this, I was also looking for information on the Iwi and now uh, because I realized just f plugging it in and setting it up at me well just first plugging it in and just trying to play it um, really wasn't working uh, working right away not the way I had imagined it should be uh, working and I realized that I had to um, yeah I had to I had to uh, set it up I had to configure it which I, which I thought was kind of like a pain in the butt because I'm thinking you know uh, it should be somewhat configured as I get it from the factory. So, but anyway, um, so I did a little search and I found a couple of people who had some configurations and then I basically, basically took what I thought was the best from those uh, configurations and used it for my own, for my own response to the instrument. So in this book, we'll, the first part, we'll talk about uh, how to configure your Iwi. Now, this is whether you're playing uh, the Iwi USB, the Iwi 5000, or maybe, you know, and, um, and maybe some of the things you'll have, you know, for the Iwi Solo. I don't have a setup for the Iwi Solo because I don't play the Iwi Solo myself, but from what as I uh, seen with the instrument with itself, it's basically already configured. It's just basically plug and play, you know, so it's um, uh, at least it's got an advanced uh, in, in that sense. I decided personally not to play the iwi solo because um i wanted to have the possibility of bluetooth to have a, to play to play cordless and um i i'd say uh, i just didn't like the cosmetic design of the instrument it looks like some type of like funky uh, funky uh oboe or something like that and for some reason you know i didn't think it looked like i was going to be able to take the instrument seriously looking like that would it i mean sure it's nice that it has its own loudspeaker but that's really in, uh, intended only for practice purposes um from following other people who have played the iwi solo none of them recommend using that uh loudspeaker or for for performance because it's just not loud enough you won't get any volume out of it so then you'll still have to go uh using a cord you still have to use a cable but uh, then again as i said there is no wireless po uh, possibility with the iwi solo just as there's no wireless possibility i mean without having to um you know, make up your own with a few other gadgets, uh, like with the Iwi uh, USB. I, you know, I had played the US, Iwi USB for a while, but I just got tired of always having to, um, you know, basically attach myself to my computer at any time I wanted to play it, you know, so uh, that that was, for me personally, kind of annoying. So, in any case, but um, 
with the Ewe 5000. Uh, of course, you can play play with, of course, using your headphones. You know, what I also like to do, uh, I have like here a mini amplifier. You can find this just about any music store. This is actually basically uh, an amplifier meant for a guitar, uh, either as a practice amp or an amp that maybe if someone's going to use just um, to play in the street, you know, it's just a, a basically it runs on like six AA batteries. It's um, uh, three watts, which is basically enough. But the coolest thing is here, okay, you have to gain out the volume. You also have an EQ and delay in it. Plus you have a possibility to plug in an MP3 player so that you could also uh, play along with tracks through the amp as well. I mean, so I have my EWE today set up, you know, with a cord directly and I'm using this small amp. Basically, so I'll be just uh, in the book, just basically deals with the technical aspect. That means really the fingering aspect of learning to play the instrument. What the book does not cover is, first of all, any type of cool sound packs or any suggestions for any uh, synthesizer sounds or any of that sort or, or any type of other type of synth performance techniques and things. That's not included because uh, that's actually a totally different topic all for itself. You'd have to really uh, delve into synthesis itself and I felt for the Iwi that's uh, at the at the moment just learning to play, it's not necessary. Uh, the Iwi itself, the Iwi 5000, has 100 sounds built in. Plus, there's an editor software where you could actually tweak sounds. You could go back and forth between user-defined sounds and also uh, sounds that are already in its uh, in its database. So that does give it an expansion for some more possibilities, you know. But um, like I said, uh, I won't go into this in this video and the book doesn't go into this either. But what I want to do is like here today, talk about a couple of basic uh, exercises when you first start out playing and some of the things you're going to have, some of the challenges you're going to have. Now, like, if uh, your main instrument if is like say alto saxophone like mine, uh, you could also set up the EV where there's a transposition button. Okay, so here up front, and I have my transposition set at E flat, you know, and I could also change it to B flat or C or G fingering, like like say for G uh, transposition, like say if you're playing like the Turkish G clar uh, clarinet or if you're playing alto flute, um, you could also set it to that. Reason why I suggest uh, transposing it, it has to do with basically what's your main instrument, which instrument, which transposition can you hear the best? And I uh, suggest starting with that uh, and be before experimenting using other transpositions like in C or B flat, you know, uh, or whatever that, that you don't usually do. You don't have to do this. Uh, you don't have to use various transpositions. You could decide just to play to just play your one transposition that you know the best and keep it at that. Maybe you want to treat the EWI as a C instrument always. You could do that. There's always that possibility. Also, uh, I make it clear in the book, I'm using, um, for the most part, the uh, EWI standard fingering throughout the whole book. And there's a reason for that. You can set up the EWI to play saxophone fingering, to set it up to play uh, flute fingering, to set up, set up to play also, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, oboe fingering. And But I decided uh, to use the EWI fingering standard because I think they are the most flexible fingerings to use for this instrument. You have the most possibilities of it. Plus, on top of that, I wanted to separate the EWI in mind also from my other instrument. Uh, too often the EWI is um, coined as an electronic saxophone and things like that. And I think that's really a very gross uh, misnomer, a great gross uh, under, a misunderstanding of the instrument, I think, in my personal view. Because um, I think if you're still thinking like a saxophone is playing this instrument, you're going to run into some problems because mainly uh, certain keys on the saxophone don't exist on this instrument. And if you're thinking too much into your main instrument uh, as, as a saxophone, you're going to wind up actually uh, misplaying pretty much. And plus, if you have a certain uh, habits on your saxophone, like for instance, 
um, when I'm playing saxophone, of course, I want to keep my fingers close to the keys. And plus, there are other certain fingerings where I purposely have uh, one fingering on another key in order to improve the balance of holding the instrument or improve the intonation. Since the iwi is a touch sensitive instrument, uh, that's not going to work well. You're going to wind up getting tones out of the instrument that you didn't intend. And that's why you have to be pretty, very precise with your fingering. And so that's why um, I, I like to uh, look at the iwi just like any other doubling instrument that you're playing as a totally different animal, as a totally different instrument, giving it that respect and also just treating it that, uh, as a totally different instrument. And that's why I also chose to play this with iwi fingering because there's a fingerings, like I said, for this instrument is flexible, but also with the fingerings for this instrument is not possible on my other instruments, you know? So it causes me more uh, to be more in tune with dedicating uh, time and effort and just the, really the, I, the mentality of playing the, the iwi. Now, before I forget, or before we uh, go on further, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and get press that notifications bell so that you get notified when I come up with another video, anytime where there's more tips like this coming out and furthermore, because I'll be discussing many things that are in the book and I will be continuing on the series alongside with my other videos about saxophone, saxophone improvisation, and and uh, possibly some other tips about doubling. And, um, and But anyway, make sure you just also, and also press that like button as well. You know, it helps me out with the, uh, with the, with the algorithm um, so that YouTube would also set it up a little bit uh, further up. And the more people like this video, the more it gets present. And of course, the better you use, so you also get notified if you just happen to find this video per chance. So moving on. Now, one of the first challenges uh, as an iwi player, uh, especially if you're coming from uh, an instrument like saxophone clarinet usually we are used to having octave keys or register keys like we would call it uh, uh, if you're playing saxophone now here with the iwi 5000 you have a series of rollers and these are basically your octave keys and there is a series of of eight of them all together luckily the two here i'll tell you third and fourth from the bottom from the bottom are rough so this way this is basically your middle position this is basically your middle position like i said like i said it depends on uh what transposition you're using how far you can get up and down the instrument uh, but it basically the the range of the iwi in its c transposition is just about the same the same trans the, the same range as a piano without but the lowest note being B flat, you know, instead of A, like on the piano, B flat is the lowest instrument on, on the E way. Going up to actually not just only high C, but actually you can get a high D out of it, but it's not on the piano. So basically, we have with it just about, if maybe a half tone more range in the piano. So um, that there's a lot of uh, possibilities for your lines, for your expressions, but also it's a challenge. It's a challenge for you to really hear, hear in certain ranges. I suggest also starting in the middle range where you're playing anything in order to just first uh, get comfortable um, with hearing the instrument. Now, so of course, because of all the octave rollers here, um, the main challenge is here is actually being able to use them and be able to use in different octaves. Now, on any wind instrument, usually the octave key is set up right across from your middle finger from where you would play, like, say, a C, like, say, on, 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 record, like, say, on recorder or on saxophone, uh, this note would be a C. And here on the iwi, it could, uh, this, is also a, this is also a C for its fingering, but there are also many different ways to play C on, on the iwi. But more on that at another time. So, but then if I want to play, start playing in octaves or lower octaves, then basically the position of my thumb in comparison to my middle finger up front is going to be a lot different. It's going to be, actually, I'm going to be moving around in ways that I am not accustomed to as a saxophonist, flutist, clarinetist, or anything like that. So 
the first exercise I'm going to be dealing with is, um, is actually just playing octaves with the octave roller. So like I'll first, just to get a hand on the instrument, I'll play like basically what's called like the basically a lower C. Yeah, here my middle range. And then I'm going to just first to do just one octave. Just have to, just practice doing that, and then practice from my starting octave, and then going down the next octave lower, and then another octave lower. So easy enough. Then I want to go up an octave. And then maybe I'm going to go an octave down and an octave up. Sorry. And then up two octaves. Taking it out and expanding it more. So basically, you want to be creative of actually roll, using the octave rollers and, and also getting used to having a hand position with, or say, a thumb position that you're normally not used to on your main instrument. I mean, so that's going to be the first challenge. And then also playing it. I mean, so your first challenge is first your first challenge is going to be about using the octave rollers. Now, now of course, within any wind instrument, the next important thing to think about is the break. That means your transition from playing, like say in this instance, C over to a D. You know, of course, you want to practice that as well because again, the iwi is a touch sensitive instrument. And so you'll have to be very accurate as far as your finger is going. So any combination where you're using around that C and a D, you want to be able to practice, um, you know, uh, all possible ways you could play certain notes, flexibility. You would do that on your main instrument. Why not do that here? Now, if you want, there's an, if you want to just use saxophone strings as an example on your e of course, you have the freedom to do that. But I, like I said, I suggest freeing yourself from that and actually trying to learn the e fingerings because, in my opinion, uh, in my opinion, it's more flexible. Now, one of the things the things, uh, things I would do that I would just first deal with learning how to play a C major scale first, you know. Now, for, I would first deal with playing a C major scale, but in this way. First of all, like every C, uh, I want to play with this fingering. So. Now, purpose of that is just to get used to the idea there are different ways of playing this C on this instrument. Well, I'd say basically, you know, for when you're reading the music, that when you see a middle C, like in the treble, uh, in the treble clef, that you don't always have to use this C. There are other possibilities, there's other possibilities to play this C. And I uh, will play this uh, again, the C major scale, but only now a C only using this one. I mean, so getting used to doing that and just, and then I would also play the C scale where I'm, as B, I'm always using this feel, it's this finger. So, so 
yeah that was i was hanging a little bit too long on this other finger here i want to be able to play um just using this b fingering uh, all the time <laughs> So with that, you'll notice that with these different octave rollers, you may have to change your wrist position for certain octaves, you know, for certain octaves going lower and going higher. Now, like I said, you know, some people um, I've seen play the E reed, but basically almost like a soprano saxophone or clarinet, uh, basically pointing downward to the floor because, you know, that doesn't matter because the sound's not coming out there. But then... Um, like say on a, a clarinetist or basically a bass clarinetist will have more freedom of movement movement with the thumb or even a, a bassoonist will have more freedom of using the thumb this way so they manage to free up their uh free up their playing this way uh and of, of using of using the thumb over the various octaves that's one way to look at it i would suggest also checking out bassoonists you know or, or you know just watching them play watching them um, use their thumb you know or so basically it is watching them how they're using their using their thumb on this hand uh, in order to, and check out the hand position the body position how this you know, would work but anyway so back to what we're doing and then uh, after going through all that you know then I would just basically use I just basically have you know basic scale exercise put in here and a basic arpeggio exercises and the main thing there uh, on top of that is try to play every scale that you're uh, that you're going to do anyway at least over three octaves if not four of course you'll have more octaves on this instrument but in the beginning get used to the idea that you have a lot larger range on this instrument than you actually have on your main instrument so um you have to get used to playing uh, in those uh, uh, that these ex these expanded ranges, I mean. So um, uh, another thing that um, that gets uh, for the, for the EUE is also the way the lower notes are arranged. You know, it's somewhat different than what you know from saxophone. Like say, if I'm playing from F down to a B. So, but once I'm playing a low B flat. Do you see in my B flat here is I have to press my finger on both these keys simultaneously and along with my my left hand pinky key. Now this course this is I say totally the opposite position as what we know as saxophonists our b flat would be also on this side on the left side going down further but here on the e we it's on the left side we have here three pinky keys instead of just the two that we knew from saxophone and on this side we have only two pinky keys than the usual four that we would have on a saxophone i mean so and that range uh you'll have to get uh used to using very used to using very different fingers than what you're accustomed to uh on 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 the iwi than what you knew uh, what you know on saxophone maybe as a clarinetist maybe you'll have no problem with this because you have different ways of playing like say low f sharp and low f and things like this so you'll have probably be more agile as far as using the different peaking fingerings you know you'll just have to get used to uh the iwi fingering because um the iwi does not have clarinet uh does not use clarinet fingering. there's no configuration for using clarinet fingering and that's pretty obvious uh why because um you know clarinet you have a different fingering for every octave actually for each note and so um uh it's it's you know it's not programmed you know, it, it's really programmed uh to try to find the easiest way you know for through through throughout the whole range for as many instruments as possible so but any case um so after going through scales of course i'll go through arpeggio exercise <laughs> So 
So as one example, again, I tried to do at least three octaves in, in order just to get uh, used to also hearing certain exercises and going up those ranges and also getting my octave rollers uh, fingerings together. Uh, in any case, this is one of the basic things that you first want to do with your iwi is first practice those octave rollers and first and practice the break and using uh, and, and practicing that C major scale in these three different ways of doing it, you know, with the two different C's and also using uh, using the, the the B the B fingering also in a certain way in order to uh, in order to uh, get used to fingering that you don't normally use. At this point, for those exercises, next week I'm going to present. Uh, probably a couple of other fingering techniques for using certain you know, other keys. They're also using the iwi fingering, and also some present some ideas for passages, passages, um, uh, musical passages where um, the iwi fingering might be easier to use than say uh, in comparison to certain uh, saxophone fingerings, for instance. And um, anyway, so again. Please like this video, subscribe, put on that notification bell. And so the next time um, that uh, another video comes up for Ewe Tuesday, you'll be notified and you'll be able to check it out. And please, if there's something that's um, any comments, questions, desires that what you want to really also delve into the Ewe, please write it down in the comment section and and because uh, uh, I do read all comments. Thanks a lot for tuning in and we'll see each other next week.